George was too excited to sleep. He wondered if it was time to start. 15 more minutes. <sighs> he decided to let the man sleep until the alarm woke him up. George could handle a little farm work alone. Cinchy. The Rankins didn't say whether he should wake Leslie up before milking her. They said remember to milk her from the side. Except George forgot. Five chicks and one jumpy squirrel. Huh? Huh? That wasn't right. <laughs> George had seen Mrs. Rankins drive the tractor, but how did she turn it off? more than one monkey could handle alone. George, <laughs> cut it out. Oh, hi, Mike. Mike? How did you get in here? The, the, the alarm's turned off? There's, there's a pig in my bed. George! George, what are you, how did, Okay, okay, just just sit tight, okay? Well, let's round them up, partner. I don't know if you did that on purpose, George, but it worked. <laughs> well, don't relax yet, George. We promised the Rankins we'd have the chores done before they got back. That's a dozen eggs, 10 plus two. One, two, three, four quarts, George. Nice job. <sighs> All done. Just in time, too. Welcome home. So, how'd he do? Oscar won. He's the prettiest pig you've ever seen. It's official. <coughs> Tough morning, huh? <coughs> well, um, actually, yeah. You know, because you're such a good farmer, huh? Yeah, that and the fact that Mike's on your roof. What? That's how George learned to always count everything twice and check your roof for pigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, 
this supplies your air. Now just breathe naturally, George. <laughs> your helmet contains a camera, microphone, and headphones. This locator will flash when you're close to the satellite. Be a good little sea monkey. Careful, don't get distracted. <laughs> the reef's home to all kinds of sea life. Sort of like our big city is home to all kinds of people. <gasps> what happened? George, can you hear us? <laughs> George, you're near the satellite. Head to the sea floor. <laughs> Can you see it? What? Did you find it? <laughs> nice. But we're not looking for crabs, George. Are those sh sharks? Those are small reef sharks. <laughs> they are not interested in monkeys. The coral reef supplies them with food. Huh? <laughs> he found it. That's my monkey. George, can you see an open place to move the satellite to? Good. Now release your emergency marker. I'll fly over and drop you a line. The data module's intact. Our research is saved. Thanks to George. George! Oh, George. George! Yep. <laughs> Flying in a helicopter was fun. But George liked exploring the ocean better, because in the sky, there are no sea turtles. <gasps> Pasta fajoule! It's gonna take hours to untangle this mess. We don't have hours. We are due down at the town hall now. Ah! 
But so did George. Okay, George. Guard this spaghetti strand with your life. Hello. You have reached Biscettis. Please leave a tasty message. Steve, are you there? Pick up. I have an important question to ask. George wasn't sure if he should pick up the phone. Pick up the phone! <laughs> so George picked up the phone. Uh -huh. Oh, Steve, thank goodness you answered! We need for you to check on something for us, eh? <laughs> yeah, please go outside and tell me how tall the building next to our building is. <laughs> Yoki got in. She felt very clever. For a second. How is he going to do it? Since he knew he was two feet tall, maybe he could use himself as a measuring tool. Okay, that was one George. But how many Georges tall was the building? If only he had something like that measuring tape. <gasps> or why not that measuring tape? Hello, hello, Steve! Do you have an answer for me? <laughs> George knew he had to keep Gnocchi away from that spaghetti strand. He had an idea how to do it. <laughs> this was going great. 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet. Uh oh. The tape measure was only 20 feet long, but the building was more than 20 feet tall. But how much more? There's Biscetti's restaurant. And here's Chef Biscetti's strand of spaghetti. <laughs> I have got to get a picture of this. George could see that the spaghetti wasn't touching the ground. When George held the strand at the top of his head, it reached the ground. That meant the building was exactly one spaghetti strand and one George tall. Love this. Stevie, why you don't come back in the middle? <gasps> You're Ginny, the world record book lady. And you must be Chef Piscari. <laughs> yes, yes. And up there on the roof, is that your monkey friend? Uh, yes, uh, Mug. Uh, <gasps> Giorgio? Displaying your super long spaghetti strand. Here's the photograph I just took of it. Wow. Does that set a world record, Jenny? Oh, I'm afraid not. Here's the picture I took of Alfonso Dimitri displaying his strand of cooked spaghetti from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. No, oh, no. Now I'm never gonna get in the world record book. You most certainly will. You have the second longest strand of cooked spaghetti. Three stories tall. Son of the Ouch, God, it's spaghetti. <laughs> so Gnocchi finally got to play with the spaghetti. And Chef Biscetti broke a second record. World's longest cat toy. Huh. Oh, no, another blackout? Nope. Watch this. Are we ready, Dr. Levitt? Ready. <sighs> I 
wanted you to be the first to see. To see that the lights work? You just witnessed the first test of the solar panels I installed to power the museum. We're unveiling them at a party tonight. We're a solar museum. Wow. <laughs> Usually, electricity is made far away and sent in on wires. But now, the museum makes its own power. Ah. Solar panels turn the sun's rays into electricity, which is then stored in these batteries. And they get all their power from the sun. George never knew the sun could charge batteries. <laughs> A remote control spaceship is the perfect hot weather toy. <laughs> Until the batteries run out. Then he remembered how the museum batteries got power from the sun. Ah. So why not let the sun charge up his batteries too? There was something else with batteries that needed charging. George, have you seen the phone? <laughs> it's outside. It should be on its charger. Oh no, battery's still dead. <laughs> you wanted the sun to charge it? Well, that's not how solar power works, George. Since the phone won't work, can you take a note to Professor Wiseman for me? <laughs> oh, those are solar panels. They convert the sun's rays to electric power, remember? George forgot about solar panels. That's why the phone didn't charge. <laughs> right. Batteries store the energy the solar panels create, so we have it when we want it, even at night. <laughs> Thanks, George. Five o'clock. If I put it in the oven right now, it'll be ready in plenty of time. Oh, another blackout. George, the oven's electric. My lasagna won't cook. Uh, I'd better warn Professor Wiseman we may be late, or, or worse, lasagna-less. Oh, where did I leave it now? <laughs> There's no way on earth to cook without power. George, that reflected sun is hot. <laughs> that reflected sun is hot. George, you may be a genius. <laughs> a pizza box keeps pizza warm, so it'll hold the heat. <laughs> a hole to let the sun in. Glue on some plastic wrap to keep the heat from getting out again. And shiny aluminum foil to direct the sun's heat into the box. Fantastic! Angle it so the sun hits the lasagna. If the power comes back on, we can put it in the oven. But if it doesn't, I think it'll cook. Hours later, guests arrived at the museum, which was the only building in the whole city with electricity. Ah, how do you have a lights? And air conditioning? The whole city is without electricity. Ah, oh, the museum is now solar powered. Blackouts can't affect us. I'm sorry, our power has been out all afternoon. I couldn't make a dessert. I know. Poor Dr. Levitt won't have her favorite birthday things. <coughs> Excuse me, Chef. Monkey finger. <gasps> it's 
It's hot. It's cooked. We made a solar cooker. Thank George <laughs> and the sun. Oh, thank you. Nothing could make this birthday more special than a solar lasagna. <laughs> That was nice of you to teach him to drive the solar car. I thought you taught him. George! <laughs> George! <laughs> George! Come back with that expensive piece of car! Do! George was in the country, where things were much, much cooler. Go! Oh, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you call that a cannonball? I'll show you a cannonball! George loved the country. It had lots of great stuff the city didn't have. You could hear frogs croaking. You could feel the breeze from a hummingbird's wings when it spun around the flowers. At night, you could see a sky full of stars. What you doing, George? Stargazing? No one knows exactly how many stars there are. Not even scientists. Huh? That's when George thought, maybe it's time somebody found out. The most important rule in star counting was keeping track. George marked each star down on his pad. The two most important rules in star counting were knowing the difference between stars and lightning bugs and keeping track. Third rule, the other two rules don't matter if you don't stay awake. Because when you come back the next night, you can't tell which stars were counted or uncounted. The only solution, counting them all fast before you fall asleep. One, two, three, four, five. 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 <laughs> there had to be a way to count stars and go to sleep, too. He just had to figure it out. the big upside-down cap. It could be a placekeeper. He could count the stars below it until he had them all, then move to the other sides. He had a system. Well, big hot city, here we come. <sighs> uh, we can't turn it on, George. Don't want to knock out all the power. George was too hot to sleep. The one time he could have stayed awake, and there weren't any stars to count. <laughs> There was only one thing for a monkey to do at a time like this. Hide. George? George? Uh, the power's out. <sighs> George? You up here? Uh-huh. Hi, compass. George tried to tell the man with the yellow hat how sorry he was for wrecking the city's electricity. Oh, you think the blackout is your fault? <laughs> oh, George. It takes more than one little monkey to cause a blackout. I hope. 
This seemed like even more stars than they had in the country. That's not the only good thing. These will melt with the freezer turned off. So I guess we just have to eat them. <laughs> you found the Big Dipper. George settled in for a good, long, relaxing star count. <sighs> All done! <laughs> Thank you so much. Grazie. <laughs> My new dessert, the ice cream gnocchi, for you, Giorgio. Consider it the Helpful Monkey Award. My thank you for a job well done. This plate of ice cream was Giorgio's first trophy. A trophy is a reward for doing something well. It's just mean to melt a guy's helpful monkey award. Giorgio, what did you do? Leave your ice cream gnocchi in the sun? <laughs> well, maybe I can still use it for something. Don't leave it in the sun where it'll melt. Now there was no sun to melt it. All George had to do was wait for the man with the yellow hat to come home. A lobby leaf. Luckily, George had time to clean it off so it would be perfect when the man with the yellow hat saw it. Luckily for Curious Hunley, George wanted to show off his trophy. <laughs> it didn't make sense. There was no sun. He didn't drop it. You ran water on it. Oh, that's gonna make it melt too. Yeah, right. But this is the last one. No sun, no dropping, and no washing it. Hey, how much ice cream can one monkey eat alone? I think he's gonna share this time. Cream, George. We are. Oh, it's a party. Be a good neighbor, monkey. Share. You've already had so much. Let's get him. <laughs> we got him. He's, he's right there. Trophies? <laughs> you got that as a trophy? <laughs> well, let me get a picture. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, George, would you like a subway map as a souvenir of your first ride? <laughs> okay, wait here. I'll be right back. <laughs> George couldn't wait to get on the train, so he didn't. Oh, good, the train's here. Now where's George? George? Here you go. George, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Huh? Wait, my monkey's on the train. George, get off at the next station and wait for me there. <laughs> oh, hey there. I've never had a monkey on my train before. Would you like to see how I drive this thing? <laughs> oh, maybe you'd even like to help. Whoa. <laughs> okay, the workers are done and the light's green, so it's time to get moving. So let's blow the horn. Ooh. <laughs> now move the lever forward, easy, and get this train a-rolling. <laughs> Great job. You can drive my train anytime. Bye now. <laughs> hey, it was George's friend Marco. <laughs> Hola, George. Do you want to play with us? <laughs> George! Excuse me, pardon me. Oh! Hey! George, I'll wait for you at the next stop, Petite Paris. Don't worry. George was confused. He heard the rumbling and the screeching. So, where was the train? Wait a minute. Huh? George was confused. This looked like where he'd been before. And that was the same clown, which meant... Uh -oh. George was back where he started. How did he do that? Why, hello there. I thought you were going to the zoo. Uh -huh. ah. Hello, pal. <laughs> I don't understand. Where's George? I told him to get on the next train. If George didn't get on the uptown train, then maybe... Could he have gotten on the downtown train by mistake? Because I never explained that there were two trains. That must be it. Oh, hang tight, George. I'm coming. <laughs> what? George, hold on. Stay on the train and go to the zoo. <laughs> Due to mechanical difficulties, there will be a one hour delay on the uptown line. One hour? That's it. Subway's out. Running's in. See you, Reginald. Cheerio! George loved riding on the subway, but he also couldn't wait to see a dragon. Ah! Not only did George see a dragon on his way to the zoo, he also saw an Italian opera singer some Russian dancers. <laughs> and a Swiss yodel. <laughs> Finally, George had arrived at the zoo. Yourself. And 
faster than I did. Now, let's hurry and get over to the zoo because I think they... Close at 4 p.m. Sorry. Oh, but it took us all day to get here and, and we really wanted to see the Komodo dragon. Isn't there anything you can do? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with a monkey in a zoo, I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> so, why did it take you all day to get here? It's a long story. Ah, well, little advice. Next time, take the subway. It's faster. <laughs> Hey, George. George! <laughs> How about taking a bath to wash all that mud off? George was puzzled. Did the bathtub run out of water? Hey, George, I'm not getting any water downstairs. How about you? <laughs> I'd better call Mr. Quint. <laughs> so, how's it look, Mr. Quint? Did our well run dry? Oh, no, 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 just a broken pump. You got plenty of water down there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, this here is your house. That's the water. Huh. And to get to it, all you have to do is dig a well. Huh? Yep, a well. See, a well is just a hole in the ground that's deep enough to reach water. And a pump, like that one there, suctions the water up and out. Well, sort of like the way you're using that straw. Every time you suck on it, you're pulling the orange juice up out of your glass. Well, your house won't be seeing water for a few more days, I'm afraid. I have to order you a new pump. A few days? Well, I guess that means we're going back to the city, George. Some of us still need a bath. <laughs> okay, go straight in and run a bath, George. <laughs> hey, George? <laughs> I have to go help Professor Wiseman. Don't forget about that bath. George decided that the best thing to do was to put all his toys in the tub. <laughs> Hello? Is anyone there? I just wanted to make sure you saw that orange fly eye slipped under your door. We have to shut off all the water at 4 o'clock, which is... now! I'm going in! <laughs> yep, to get to water, all you have to do is dig a well. <laughs> but Hundley had finally cleaned up George's mess. George remembered that a well didn't need to be wide, it just needed to be deep. George had water. What he didn't have was a way to get it out of the ground. George remembered that people used pipes to carry water from their wells. So that's what George needed, a very long pipe. This would work. With duct tape, anything was possible. was going up the straw. At this
this rate, George would have his bathtub filled in no time. Uh -oh. Except the well was out of water. George had to dig a deeper hole. George had struck a mother load of water. Water spurting up 20 feet in the middle of the city? Not a good sign. See, the whole reason we turned the water off was to figure out why we were losing pressure. Uh, turns out the water main leading to the building had a crack in it. I still don't know how George discovered the water main or the crack, but it's a good thing you did. <laughs> Well, I have to say, George, you haven't looked this clean in days. When you take a bath, you really take a bath. 